So, please sit down, shut up, listen in, or at least two out of three, it's not too bad. So this is lecture number eight, and I was very enthusiastic last time about how exciting all our episodes are, and I'm struck again by the fact that I didn't even reach the peak yet. So here's another peak of peaks. Regression analysis. Who can go through life without working with regression analysis? For sure, no engineers. That's for sure. Many others also not, but hey, we're engineers. So um, we need regression. We have a nice plan, as usual. It is somewhat split around here, according to my plan. We are going to look at scatter plots, doing regressions, putting a line into a scatter plot. I think most of us met that concept early on in our career, maybe even as far back as elementary school, but if not else, then in high school. Maybe you even thought about how to compute the line, then we'll recap that. And uh, I wonder how much you thought about the statistical issues related to doing such an exercise and endeavor. Maybe you did, then you're fine. I would expect most didn't. So here it comes. Let us jump into this little toy example that we already met on the first day of the course. Do you remember we met this toy data set? to talk about the concept of correlation, correlation coefficient. The fact that weights and heights across these 10 persons appear to be correlated, right? They co-vary. A person with a high height seems to also have a high weight according to these data, right? That's the story of these data. If we had any doubts about this, physiological sort of obvious thing in a way, then the numbers here support that uh, interpretation of the data. So 10 students, we plot the weight versus the height. We'll use this example throughout this lecture. It's a good example in terms of many things. But I hope that you all get the point, no matter which domain specific interest you have in education that you follow, that the concept of plotting two things in a scatter plot and trying to learn from such a plot or from data where we have some X data and some Y data is a pretty generic concept that I'm sure you will have the understanding that you will meet in, meet in all of your kind of different areas, no matter who you are. This is what we'll do, right? We'll throw in a line. We'll talk about how to compute it. The computer will do it for us, but I want you to understand how. Um, and the formula also. We give you an explicit formula for how to compute this line. Well, I already said it. R can do everything for us. If, and that's the basic function in R, we'll meet it a couple of times during this course, and then later in your life, you'll meet it again. If not in this software, then in some other software. The function is called LM for linear model. Linear model. That resembles quite a bit what we're looking at here. Actually, it's much more general also, but we'll see that later on in the course. We make a model where y is a function of x, y tilde x. This is R notation for models, used very generically in many type of R functions and procedures. Y is considered a function of X, that's the Y tilde X notation. So it's a specific R notation for models. And here you see a lot of things, we'll get back to that, but the core thing in this output is the line. And here is the line, the intercept and the slope under the heading of estimate. And then with the names intercept and X, right? So we should remember what the intercept is in a linear regression. There is a way to also plot the, the line. We'll see that in a, a bit later. Or you copy in the R code that I share with you. You'll see how you can throw in a line in a scatter plot. 
Here I basically showed you my summary of what will go on today, as I often do, right? I sort of give you a summary of what it's all about and then we dig into it to learn about it. There are a number of things we're going to do today. We're going to think about how to make the line. That's the black one. You saw that earlier in your life, I'm sure. Then we're going to have some statistical thoughts around this. We're going to think about the fact that when I sample 10 persons like this, this is not the ultimate truth. If I sampled another 10 persons on another day, I would get a different line just by sampling error, right? By s the, the process of sampling because I only have limited information in my data. And we're going to deal with that. That's the concept of our, our course. That's to deal with sampling uncertainty of whatever we compute. In this case, a line. A line consists of two things, an intercept and a slope. What's the slope, by the way? 1.113. Let's call it 1.1. What's the interpretation? That's, the, that's often in linear regression. That's the most interesting number of them all. This number, which is for the x in the model. The slope of the regression line. The interpretation is that the model expressed that the expected weight for a person that is one centimeter higher than another person, if you want, that weight gain or additional expected weight would be 1.1 kilogram, right? One centimeter, one kilogram, right? One centimeter, 1.1 kilogram. As a population model, this is, this is across with people that that's how, so these are the expectations to the different height populations that we express like that. So we say that the expected weight of persons depends on the height. Makes sense, right? And then we put some uncertainties on this. We're going to put the red one. That's going to be confidence intervals for the line. And then we're going to meet a new thing today, which is called prediction intervals. We'll get back to that. Because we're going to use the line in two ways, for estimation and for prediction. And the uncertainty, well, the line is the line. We're not going to change that. But the uncertainty reasonings and uh, dealing with uncertainties uh, are two different things. So that's what we will learn today. Everything is basically covered in this. To get the uncertainty of the line, we need to know the uncertainty of the slope and the intercept. And that's close to what we have learned earlier about getting the uncertainty of a mean. So we are not too far from what we already know, but we're going to extend the methodology. So that's what we are going to do today. And as usual, if you want to play with me, then now is time to play. Or play with each other, maybe I should say. Do we need a sort of music to get started? Get in the mood? What's the expected number of names popping in during the next five seconds? What distribution would that follow? Poisson, exactly. At least if the intensity is constant over time, which is likely not a valid assumption here. Okay, um, okay, I think we are getting there. 
coming in. Let's start. Nine questions. Too bad of a start. This was a recap of last time, and since you did well, let's move on quite rapidly. Not sure I'm going to pronounce that name, but anyway, good job. Um, maybe a lucky job, but uh, anyway, we'll see about that. Linear regression model. <laughs> 